Hi, it's time for the math. Easy solution to discuss the intermediate value theorem, basically go over it, and also an example on how to basically use it to prove that uh, a root exists in an equation. Basically, let's go over this intermediate value theorem quickly. It's pretty uh, straightforward. Theorem is suppose that f is continuous on the closed interval a and b. Never closed means you include the, uh, the endpoints, so they have to be defined. You see video link below on closed and open intervals. Anyways, and, and let n be any number between f of a and f of b, where basically f of a and is not equal to f of b, then there exists a number c in a and b. This is open interval, so it doesn't include the endpoints, such that f of c equals 2n right here. So I'll just uh, show this graphically, we'll just illustrate this better. Yeah, so if we were to graph this here, if I just draw the x and y axis right here, and we know that f is continuous, so if we just draw something like, let's say from this interval here, we go something like this, this is f, it's continuous right here, and this is at b, and this is at a. These are uh, what's closed, they have filled in circles, meaning they're defined there, so that's what this closed interval is. So if you have it from a and b, and let's say n be any number between f of a, this is, let's say, f of a right here and this point right here is f of b so if n is in between let's just we could just draw it let's say right here this is let's say f of n right here or I mean this is n so if we, if we have n this value we just draw a straight line across it and as you can see graphically then there exists a number c within a and b so that's going to be somewhere like right here this is c and basically f of c is equal to n right here and that's this point right here and this is f of c is equal to n so th this is all the, the proof is trying to illustrate and it doesn't matter if f of a is greater than f of b because you could even have something like let's say like over here and then drag it down and if, so if you have something like this and if you have your n value here which is in, anywhere in between then you're just going to have a new c right over here so this is a C2, so it doesn't really matter. So yeah, I just got rid of that. I just drew that one just to uh, illustrate that it doesn't matter where F, and a, F of A and F of B are as long as they don't equal each other. So now we can actually apply this uh, simple theorem right here, this intermediate value theorem, to prove that a root exists uh, for this equation. This example basically states, show that there's a root of the equation between X equals 1 and X equals 2. Remember, a root is just when... Basically, when you plug in x, you equal zero. Uh, this whole thing equals zero right here. So just wherever y is equal to zero. So if we let this this function right here equal to f of x right here. So now we basically have to find out what x. So at what value of x is f of x zero or is f zero? So that's all we have to do. And and the way to use intermediate value theorem is well in this case we could let uh, basically let a is equal to well one in this case b is equal to 2 and now our n value is just going to be well this is just going to be 0 so now we have to find f of a so f of a is going to be equal to f of 1 and this one is equal to we'll just plug this in so 4 times 1 cubed doesn't change anything minus 6 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 2 this equals 2 well 4 minus 6 plus 3 minus 2 what is this going to equal to? Let's add these up. This is going to be negative 2 plus 3 is going to equal to plus 1. So minus 2 is equal to negative 1 right here. You can put in a calculator. So you get the answer of negative 1. So as you can see, this one is less than 0 right here. And now if we plug in f of b right here, this equals 2 f of 2. So same thing. Here I just plugged in the 2 right here. You get now this is 4 times 8 minus 6 times 4 plus 6 minus 2 if we uh, go over this one this is going to be 4 times 8 is 32 minus 6 times 4 is 24 plus 6 minus 2 so this is a 4 right here so plus 4 this is going to be a 20 this is just going to be a negative 20 these two so 32 minus 20 this equals 2 well plus 12 so this is just 12 uh, yeah, you could you plug this calculator or whatnot or just work it out by hand like what I just did. And as you see, this is greater than zero right here. Thus, we have basically f of a is not equal to f of f of b. And zero is in between them. So zero is in between 
this is going to be, uh, let's say it's 12, and it's greater than negative 1. So that's these values, f of a and f of b. And also, yeah, so basically since there, we have this, thus we have to have c, yeah, c exists such that, yeah, such that f of c is equal to 0, i.e. we have a root. So basically we have at least one root. We could have multiple, it doesn't say how many you have, it just says you have at least one root. We have at least one root between one and two right here. So now if we were to graph this with Google right here, so four x cubed minus six x squared plus three x minus two, and if we zoom in all the way inside here, as you can see, there it crosses the zero right here. Remember it's continuous, so it has to get eventually cross the zero between one and two. Let's just scroll this up. So there's one, and there is, uh, where's the two? So there's a, yes, as you see, crossed it, and that we haven't even got to the two. So, so here I just fixed up the, the scale right here. So there's one, there's two, and there's, as you can see, it crosses the zero once, actually. So we have only one root, and it's around x equals 1.22 or something like that. And here I have uh, basically copied and pasted that same image right here just to put it in this uh, this word document. So you could uh, download this if you want, uh, basically. So there's, there's the f of a, this is f of b etc and there's a root and uh, we've already just proved it with uh, so we proved that there's there has to be at least one and there is one well that's all for today remember you can uh, download these notes in the dropbox link below and uh, that's all for today and hopefully you learn from this quick example and uh, yeah basically illustration of what intermediate value theorem is and that's all for today and stay tuned for another math easy solution